Welcome to Kinda Influenced, where two millennial moms navigate life and career on the internet. We're your hosts, Zoe Potter and Sarah Dickey. Grab a drink, grab a snack, and let's chat. Hi! Hello! How are you? Good! How are you with your uh, little... uh... (laughs) Okay, it looks way cuter in real it life, so I cute. think. But does I don't know. I don't know. The head, I think the headphones. I think you would be okay with like my headphones that yeah. are lighter colored or a lighter colored headband. It, I think the black on black is just a little. It's it a just, lot. It looks <laughs> like I'm wearing a really weird beanie right now. It does. Like, oh, you know how like Travis Kelsey wears those like, yeah, that like a, like a skull. Is it called a skull cap where it just like sits on top? Of, yeah, I hate those. That yeah, might be a terrible. hot take. They're so ugly and like they're they're not helping anything because your ears are sticking out. You probably still have cold ears. Is that what they're for? Are they to stop sweat from getting in your eyes? No, no, because they're for fashion. People wear them like fashionably. Oh, 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 like tiny toques. Tiny toques. Yeah, those are just. What are you thinking of? I was thinking of like you know how like athletes sometimes wear really small, like toques that make them look like condom heads. Yeah. So that's what oh, I thought. You're you just ta- unlocked I mean, a memory for me. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I was like, maybe that helps with the sweat. Because like sometimes in the cross okay, that's, So that seems like like it has a purpose. But uh-huh. these little like. Folded like, up tiny toques. What tukes. did you call them? We call them tiny toques. Tiny toques? Oh my yeah. God. They're, they're so ridiculous. Silly. So many of my staff at work wear them. And I'm like, but why? Do you judge them? I mean, yeah. Openly to their face. Okay, good. That's yeah, fine then. yeah. Like yeah. I, we engage in banter because I also am not hip, and they're hip. Mm. So they... Oh yeah, it's it's the Gen Zs. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So you know, we make we uh we banter about it because they, yeah, <laughs> they make fun of me all the time, but it's fine. Also, I just need to make a note. I don't. I don't. I, don't. I, feel like I, I was like, I know. Don't cancel me. Listen, I don't do plastic water bottles. Though I will argue that water tastes better out of them. I will Absolutely say that. Not. But I don't. I don't. You say absolutely not. No. I, I find like- this water superior. Is that like the Nestle? So not specifically this brand, <laughs> no. but like the no name wa- bottled water tastes so good in my opinion. But I am i don't buy, I don't buy these. I was just at my mom's and she has some of these yeah. handy for guests because her water's not really good. Like That's drinks, fair. So. I am a tap water girly. <laughs> um I think that there's like this thing though that Alberta has like the tastiest tap water is it filtered and everything so I think so at my at our old house before we moved to this house we were on a well and yeah so we did not drink the water we had a water cooler like a big like you know a a Brita no like a water cooler yeah uh you know like when you go to work and you have a water cooler chat (laughs) (laughs) what are they called uh I don't know Culligan. Culligan. There you go. Falgon. Isn't that like a Walmart <laughs> beauty? That's like spa Hawaiian brand? ginger yeah. um, body spray. Yeah. Okay, sorry. That just you... unlocked high school memories for me. <laughs> <laughs> Dousing ourselves in the Walmart body spray before we got out of gym and like four <laughs> minute shower in it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Every, that, every oh, girl. That and the cotton candy spray. I love, but I think that we both love it because we both love. Yeah, we do. I know right. that's like our it's grown a... up, but not grown up spray. Fantasy. I, Fantasy I'm... by Britney Spears. I get a lot of judgment when I share my get ready oh, me with me and I, but I don't care. Like, I mean, I will rock that perfume till the day I die. So they'll be putting me to rest in my casket and, and I'll we'll be like, spritz it my, on you. my grandchildren, like douse me in fantasy before I go into the earth. My um best friend, who is like situationally funny, but not no uh okay, so she's like she's just like how did you just come on the internet to thousands of people and roast your friend by saying she's not that funny? She's not, and she'll admit it. Like she's not that funny. But oh she's like <laughs> she's a lovely human being. She's like she's been my best friend for like twenty five years. Okay, but, so, so like she says like funny things, but. She doesn't like understand humor. I love this about her. Okay. So yeah. we were in Nashville and I am obsessed with that perfume. So I brought it with me, obviously. And we get into an Uber and the Uber driver's like, oh, you smell so good. <gasps> and she was like, oh, it's your Britney Spears. Or as I was like, oh, it's my Britney Spears pre- perfume. And she turns to me and she says, you'd think it smelled toxic. And it was like. <laughs> that's hilarious. I think to no, this day, so it's cute. the funniest thing she's ever said. 
Oh. <laughs> I mean, it is really funny. It was really good. It was maybe funnier in the moment also because I had been drinking for like 28 hours straight. It's like a dad joke, like the yeah. ultimate dad joke. I know oh. it's so good. Actually, I do say, I will say I prefer Midnight Fantasy. That's the blue one. Purple, blue, dark blue, dark purple. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. fair. That's uh, my fave. I get so excited when I see them. Also, a lot of my teacher friends get them for like teacher presents and then they give them to me. Oh, that's like, that's ideal because they're hard to come by. They're almost, I think they're almost extinct. Yeah. Extinct. uh, Extinct. Extinct. What are you saying? Instinct. Instinct? Who gave gave us a podcast? I don't know. They should take it away. (laughs) (laughs) You've had your fun, girls. Let's pack it up and go home. (laughs) Do you realize that this is episode 10? That's wild to me. Like, it feels like a bit of like an achievement. Yeah. I. You know what, though? I don't want to be cocky. I don't want to be that person that's like, hey, you know, we're finally getting a hang of things. And like, now that we've had 10 episodes, like we finally have a good flow. No, like we were killer from the start. 100%. Is that cocky to say? I don't care. I think that we're living in the uh, era of self-assuredness. Yeah, confidence. (laughs) That's confidence. 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 Yeah. 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 We're just really good at what we do and we're proud of it. I mean, we've got soothing voices. Uh, I don't know about that, but I will say that I think that we keep good company. We do. And I, a lot of people say it's just like gabbing with your friends, which is actually the highest level compliment. That's all I want in life. I just want you to feel like you're in a conversation with us, but we talk a lot. So you can't get a word in. I know. I'm so sorry. Maybe we should have an episode where we could have like, like call, call video call-ins. How do we do that? Like, is that a thing? I think we'd have to do yeah, my tech savviness isn't that tech savvy. Oh, God, mine's like zero. Like, yours yeah. is 10 times mine. Like, so, we could maybe do like people send us voice memos. Oh, that's a good idea. Maybe we should look into doing that and yeah. like just have like chit chat that way. That would be so fun. I, oh, can you do podcast live? Is that a thing? No. No. Okay. Never mind. It, it would be a Zoom call. I mean, we could do like a Zoom call. And... Well, you know how you do like lives on TikTok and on Instagram? Yeah, I don't know how to record it. I'm sure you can. Mm. Yeah, I didn't um, think about it like that. Hi, Reese. I was really hoping that you were going to say you want to do an episode where we just like have a conversation and then we're silent for a while so people can talk to us. In general? <laughs> just like thinking. I don't think that's a good business model. <laughs> just dead air for 10 minutes so someone can talk in their car while they're listening to our episode. I think it'd be great. Jeez. Do you, can something. you imagine how awkward it would be to just be silent staring at each other? Like we, the- we we had a little bit about that last like last last episode. Do you remember that like I hated clip? It. The clip. It was just like sitting there I, in silence, and I'm like, it. is she gonna cry? I don't know. Do we just ride it out? Do I just wait and see if she cries? <laughs> oh, and then you did. 100%. Spoiler alert: you did. But that's I cry okay. all of the time. Like I, I cried three times yesterday. Yeah. So I just got my period today. So everything's off the table. Oh. I might be bawling through this whole episode and. <laughs> I can't, I can't promise anything. I'm holding you to no standard. Okay, thank you. Uh, what'd you get up to this week? Um, I don't know. Um, hold on, <laughs> let me think. Not a whole lot, but that's okay. I feel like I've just been like catching up on work. I'm still playing a little bit of catch up from vacation. our vacation. Yeah. Um, just with like life and stuff like that um yeah no but it's been it's been good like I feel like I've I've had a like pretty busy week like the days are going by really quick I hopped back on my YouTube I saw so um my personal YouTube not our podcast YouTube and um like recorded my first video in like two months probably which was wild and like I yeah it was really good I feel like it was more of a casual episode I talked a lot of it Actually, ironically enough, I talked a lot about mental health and stuff like that. So I feel like that's a good segue into today's episode. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's been a good week. What about you? Anything fun happening other than you're freezing your tushies off? Oh, it was so cold. It's finally warming up. It's supposed to be like eight degrees in the next couple of days. Ooh, that's uh, good. Yeah. Uh, we had like immunizations and Sally's 10 month checkup. Oh, yes. Yeah. Totally fine. Uh, yeah. And like off cycle immunizations are going to because we're going to England. So we did um, MMR. Oh, what's that? 
mumps, measles, rubella, because there is measles all over the place. Oh, right shut now. up. In there yeah. or everywhere? Everywhere. They're starting to okay. be a resurgence of red measles, which is like super contagious. Oh um, my God. And so you're not supposed to get them till a year and then 18 months. But because we're traveling, we're like, oh, let's, that's let's smart. Do it okay. Bump yeah. them up. Yep. So she'll still do a year and 18 months, but she'll just, it's like false protection right now. Or, like limited protection right now, which is great. Anyway, okay. so we did that. Um, and then our pediatrician was like, start giving her like milk because you're gonna go to oh, yes. yeah, you're just going to daycare soon and she's exclusively breastfed. Um, so I gave her milk. I also can't tell you the last time I bought like a carton of milk that you have to like open. Did you get like the homo milk, like the homogenized? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and like my milk is always like twist top because I get like the protein milk. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I open, I don't know how to open a carton of milk, I learned today. Um, and then when I took it out of the fridge to give her some, I dropped the entire carton on the ground. Um don't okay. <laughs> all I can think about is that friends episode where Joey's on the infomercial and he's yes. like, You struggle <laughs> opening milk. And yes. I was like, No one struggles opening milk. Sarah struggles opening milk. She would benefit from that stab and turn for really so I spilled like half a liter or probably a liter of milk on the ground and milk is like so slippy anyways I didn't fall it's expensive fine. in this economy <laughs> right um, and then I give Sally like a little cup of it and she hates it she's oh, like yeah what she's like what oh, is yeah. this this isn't from your teat um yeah. and then she just dumped it all over the ground so yeah the milk the milk I feel like the the transition from for us to milk was a little bit easier because both my kids were on formula at that point yeah. So it was like, I mean, from one weird tasting thing to another weird tasting thing. Yeah. It's like not breast milk. Breast milk's like on another level. So. And I don't like, I don't want to give her a bottle because she's never had a bottle. So oh. I'm like, yeah, she's never taken a bottle. So I'm giving it to her in a sippy cup. So then she oh. just dumps it. Oh yeah. She's living her best life. <laughs> Can she do a straw yet? Has she learned straw? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah so, so do a straw. Yeah. She's still, that's what she's dumping. Oh, just not, not about it. She's like, she's I hate, nah. I, mom, this is rude. This isn't warm and it doesn't smell like you. Can you mix? Like, can you do a little mixy moo? I refuse to pump ever again. Oh, okay. So that's fine. I'm what about it. like hand express milk yourself? <laughs> I don't know. Um, I probably, I'm not, I'm not going to, she's just going to get used to it. No, that's fine. We're living in the suck it up princess club. Suck it up princess. I didn't say that. Literally. Child literally literally, literally no. suck up that milk for and i'll be fine it's just gonna take like no. expo- it's a, a, a exposure therapy or something right yeah it's it's new it's like and yeah. you're starting early which is good because yeah. she's got a couple months to go still yeah you got time i'll be fine it's gonna be fine um i have a question i'm scared no i that the whole talk about like breast milk and stuff just kind of like clicked something in my head i was watching youtube Nope. I was watching TikTok <laughs> and there was this girl who was like ordering the Erwan smoothie. So you know how they have like special the ha- smoothie. The Haley Bieber smoothie. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But this is the Sophia Richie one. I don't know her new married name. I'm so sorry. I I don't even know. But she got married. Anyway, so this is the Sophia Richie one. So she's ordering this Erwan smoothie and she's like, hi, can I have the Sophia Richie smoothie or the blah 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 smoothie with no colostrum? Yeah. I'm sorry. It's no, no, now. no. But everyone was just so casual about it, mm-hmm. and like, like that's it's, a, it's thing. like a health, it's a health I, kick right now. I thought she was joking. Like I genuinely thought, and then I went to the comments. She wasn't joking, and Sophia Richie was in there with like hard eyes, and I'm like, wait a minute, are we just putting colostrum? Whose colostrum is this? And cow why colostrum. are we? Why are we putting it in smoothies? What is happening? So cow colostrum, but also weird. I, I, there's apparently like a ton of health benefits to it. Well, well, yeah, we know that because it's, <laughs> it's for newborn babies. And I, like, I just like, what are we like nursing cow, cow moms before they get like pregnant cow moms to get all this I'm colostrum? I'm so confused. Yeah. Like I was actually confused. Like I, I was like, no, that has to be like a joke. Like she must be joking. So I think you can like order it on Amazon. Like you can order colostrum. I just... I, know. I just like I know it has health benefits but like there's there's like, like I don't want to eat sea kelp I don't there's like a lot of things where I'm like I don't care how beneficial this is to my health I don't want it but yeah but you're also putting snail goo on your face so I feel yeah, like how good does my skin look it looks pretty good 
I don't know um, if it's worth putting the goop on my face, though. The goo. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'll, uh, I should look more into it because I know it's like a thing right now. Also, um, if you're listening and you know, can you just, you just tell give us. us some heads up? Because or I'm like, use it. Tell us why it's so good. Oh, yeah. What, like, tell me, tell me, wh- like, what, why are we doing this? So, and I'm not judging you. I'm just, I just had no idea that this was a thing. And I thought it was a joke because, like, I hear, I'm like flashing back to the hospital. Pulling this like gooey, sticky, sorry, this is TMI, but I don't care. (laughs) Gooey, sticky, like yellow goo out of my tit to give to my baby. Making sure they get every last drop. They're like, it's liquid gold. It's liquid gold. But now we're taking it from cows and putting it in smoothies that are $25, $30. Like I have so much colostrum in my freezer. Really? Yeah, because I pumped it. How did you pump? It's so sticky. How did you get that much? You use a syringe. So they're in syringes. Like I have like syringes filled. So okay, I'm it, waiting and then for you, you to like s- tell me you have literal no. like friggin' freezer no. bags. I probably have trap. like I probably have like forty three millimeter syringes. Respectfully sell that because apparently <laughs> it's a hot commodity. I know. If anybody wants Sarah's collection, <laughs> please DM us now. Please DM us and let us know because uh, it's just sitting there. It's same with like my breast milk. Like my breast milk that's in the freezer, I can't give to Sally anymore. It's been there for too long. Like she's ten months old. I've been pumped since she was three months. Um, but I'm like not ready to throw it out. No, do milk baths when she's sick or this when, is what yeah. I yeah. And Bryce yeah. is like, it's time to let go of it. I'm like, that no, is do milk baths. part of me. And like, it's good for if she's sick, if she has a fever, if she has yeah. um a rash, literally a a really bad diaper rash. Throw her in a milk bath. Perfect. See. Yeah. See, See Bryce, I'm not reason. getting rid of it. Yeah, Bryce. Though we should um, be selling Sarah's colostrum. We, we should, should be. That. I'm into that. Uh, speak, so t- speaking of TikTok, what's on your free page? Um, okay, drama. Woo-hoo! Drama. I feel like every like episode we chat and there's new drama. That's just TikTok, though. That's it's TikTok. just a bunch of drama and then TikTok shop. Yeah. So, yes. Um, okay, actually, there's two things. So the first thing is that stupid TikTok shop. Everyone's trying the bulldog. Bulldog? Noodles? Oh, bulldog noodles. I have them upstairs. Okay, where do you get them? Like Superstore. Oh, really? I've never yeah. seen them at Superstore. And like the, so they, in the world food aisle. Okay, okay. Well, maybe I'll go to Super. I don't, we don't have a Superstore like in my town now. We used to have one. Oh. So I'll just, ne- next time I'm in that area, I'll check. Yeah. I usually would go to like TNT, but we don't have a TNT close by. Oh, I feel because... like, yeah, they definitely have them there too. Yeah. Um. So yeah, so, okay. So everyone's trying these like, spicy carbonara the pink pack that's what I have yeah and I'm like I want to try these I don't know where to get them like well anyway so that's half of my free and they're all TikTok shop can I just because... like they're not that great oh they're not good they're fine like it's they're fine it's a instant noodle like it's not I'm not like oh <laughs> Game my changing. life is better now because yeah. of this like it's an instant noodle it's like a tasty lunch sure so, like, when I make my ramen, I make my own sauce for it because, like, yeah. it's, ne- like, I always just, like, so maybe this would just save me a step. Yeah, like, it's it's good. I wish that, like, because you're not supposed to eat them as a soup. You're supposed to just eat them as the noodles. And I Correct. miss the broth. Like, I want the soup. Oh, I don't like the broth. I always get rid of the broth. All right, fine. I want creamy. I don't want, like, sopping wet. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, that's my one part of my free page. And then the other okay. part is this hair drama going on with this stylist Alfredo I, and hey okay. this girl the, Taylor yeah the Kylie Jenner lookalike girl which okay. I mean she doesn't like being called the Kylie Jenner lookalike girl but she looks just like she Kylie looks, Jenner I thought she was Kylie Jenner at first I was like what did Kylie Jenner do to her hair they look identical though I do know that Taylor like that's just her face I'm pretty sure like I'm pretty sure she's I don't not, think she, she's not like Ashley to Taylor yeah I think Ashley's had some stuff yeah, yeah. done whereas yeah. Ashley I think Taylor's face is just like that like I'm pretty sure and she's young too so I think that she's been like always recognized anyway so she did this whole fiasco where she bleached her hair she fried it chopped I don't know if it was a chop or if it was a chemical cut Mm -hmm. like short frizzy dry blonde hair and then so she's like I have to fix it I want this I don't know what to do so then I guess this Alfredo guy who's like does like really famous transitions like crazy transitions whatever offered to fix her hair for her which Mm -hmm. lovely great so she goes they dye it brown because it's fried um and i think they put some like caramel color highlights through like balayage whatever anyway so she i guess went in with the 
expectation that she was going to get like a full head of extensions like super expensive long hair luscious she said from the beginning she wanted long luscious hair um and I guess what she was saying is that like her the extension person didn't want to work with them so they didn't give them the extensions to use for her hair so then they only put in a couple of an extensions to just fix like the bald patches and they kept her hair short. Mm -hmm. So I guess she wasn't really happy. Nobody else was really happy. It looked so much better than it did before. Yeah. But it wasn't like a dramatic transformation. Um, And I guess she just wanted like this full head of extensions, but she couldn't, I guess she couldn't afford it. I don't know. It was so, it's so, there's so many different like, so everyone's saying he's in the wrong. Everyone's saying she's in the wrong. It's like the whole tanning scenario yeah. all over again. Was so, there a contract? I know. So no contract. So and then I guess she she had the argument that other like Olaplex was offering to fly her out and fix her hair. Everyone was offering it. So she was like, everyone wanted to fix my hair and I chose you and you didn't give me extensions. And like, anyways, it was this whole thing. The only thing that <laughs> this is ridiculous because this is the way my brain works. I don't like, I'm just like, it sounds like it was a huge miscommunication. Yeah. It sounds like there was a lot of factors involved, but I will say that she, I don't know. I don't know. If she, I don't know. I don't know the right, right situation here. I think everyone was at fault probably, but the thing that blew my mind out of this, everyone's just skipping over this little fact. She said in the comment section of one of her like talking videos where she's talking about what happened, that he was paid by the companies to do this transformation on her hair and zero paid partnership. Like on the video of her, like he tagged all the brands. He's hyping up all these brands. It was a paid collaboration with these brands and he didn't freaking disclose it. Can we disclose things, please? I feel like I, we learned two things from this. Always get a I, contract. Yes. And disclose, disclose your shit. It's just so misleading. I, yeah. Like, mm-hmm. tell me, like, not a day goes by that another ad comes up on my page that's an ad that's not disclosed. If I All see one more bloom. Oh, my <laughs> Sometimes I'm other- like, do people just really like this product and this is, like, natural? No. Because no. it's always at the very end of their thing, bloom yeah. partner. I just... I- why are we ashamed of doing ad? Like when I make an ad, I'm like, hey, you guys, guess what? This company wanted to work with me. I'm going to boast from the mountaintops that this is an ad. I feel okay. special. I will say this. I'm never ashamed of doing ads. No. My issue is, is that TikTok specifically, it, oh Instagram so-so, they suppress TikTok's the horrific. crap out of Terror- it. I posted an ad like two weeks ago on TikTok and I think it got like a thousand views. And I'm like, I have 363,000 followers. Yeah. Or like when I posted the ad and... um. They sneakily yes. hid it from the for you page. Did yeah. not tell me until I went to check my analytics. And they're like, by the way, we were not showing this on your yeah. for you page because X, Y, Z. Their reasoning was it wasn't um, kind of good quality. quality. It was immaculate quality. It looked fantastic. I put so much work editing and shooting that. Yeah. Um, And then I appealed it and they denied it. <laughs> <laughs> they said, what is wrong mm, with TikTok? Our reasoning sticks. You're wrong. I hate TikTok so much sometimes. Like I have such a hate, hate relationship with that app. Do you know why they're suppressing our ads? Because we talk trash about them on this podcast all the time. They're listening and they're like, why do you hate us? Then why do they suppress everyone except (laughs) the people with billions of followers ads? It's ridiculous. Um, My for you page. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, Do you know who Bethany Frankel is? Oh, yeah. What's she doing? She's in Abbotsford right now. Do you know? Oh yeah, I knew she was. I knew she was in BC. (laughs) What is she doing? Why is she here? Filming a movie. Oh fun. She's an actor. No, Um, but I love. I love this for her. Okay. Um. Have you? Do you know? Do you know anything about Abbotsford? Yeah, I flew in there. Okay, so it's like outside of Vancouver. Its nickname is Stabbotsford. Um. Oh, I mean, we're, we're Stabmonton. It's fine. Oh, okay. Um, they, It's like kind of like a you blink and you miss it town is what people say about it. Yeah. Bethany Frankel has put Abbotsford on the map. 
Oh, so, like, good for her. She is like, it's my favorite. She is just going to like every local business and reviewing them. She is making me want to take a trip to Abbotsford. If you look at her comment section, all of these Vancouver people are like, I'm coming out to Abbotsford now. Like this is, who knew that this little gem was just a minute outside of our city? I love um, that. Oh, it's the best. I am obsessed with Abbotsford. Last night I asked Bryce if we could move there. He was like, I mean, yeah, we're not going to. Don't worry. We're moving to Ontario. We're not moving to Ontario. We're not moving Yeah, there. move to Ontario, please. <laughs> I ask um, her every day every day but yeah so it's it's just like really wholesome content my 40 I love page that. is so wholesome right now um oh, can you give me some of that please so nice it's I like can feel the negativity like <laughs> coursing through my veins it's like cute little babies and like Aww. puppies and bethany frankel eating hot dogs in abbotsford and like eating candy she's obsessed with candy she's obsessed with the dollar tree um she's really out here doing god's work i love it i love yeah. her just living her life you know she is my favorite my favorite thing in the entire world is i don't know if you ever watched her like review food she'll like take a bite of it and then she just sits with her eyes closed and she's like oh, yes and like talks about Aww. how it's my favorite um she's also a cottage cheese lover so i've got a soft spot oh. For her. oh of course miss queen of cottage cheese she's coming for my title <laughs> i love it mm, so that's my 40 page medium boring but really wholesome i love it i love it what are we chatting about this <laughs> I can't even be silent for 10 seconds. Uh, what are we talking about this week? Um, we're going to chit chat about um, mental health and protecting your mental health while being on the internet, whether you're a creator or whether you're just a, you know, watcher, observer, um, scroller, um, a little bit about that, a little bit about, you know, negativity online. And yeah, we're just going to get deep. I love it. Deep, but also protect ourselves while being deep. I was like, are you ready to get deep? Yeah, I'm fine. I'm okay, good. Let's do it. I'm, good. I'm on my period. So this is the <laughs> this perfect is time to do it. <laughs> Great. Can't wait. Um, What do you, what's like your number one thing for protecting your like mental health while having a space? What do you do? Tell um, me about it. Use my block button. Block I never, bless. I never used to use it. I would feel guilty about blocking people. Why? I don't know. I ha I'm a very low confrontation type person. I've faked it in the past where I'm like, yeah. I can clap back at rude people and it was fine. But like, also it didn't fix anything. Like no. people were still horrible and yeah. like all it did was make funny content. And like, I enjoyed it sometimes, but like at the same time, it's just, I don't have the energy for that anymore. No. And I just don't want to feed the negativity. Totally. So uh, yeah, using my block button and um, I don't go into my comment section of viral videos. I've learned about that mm -hmm. in the past. Um, yeah, those are my biggest, two biggest things. Yeah. I what about my you? I looked at my block section before I started recording. We started on this today. What I have like, like 700. Wow. So only I just, just be I don't have that many, but I do have a couple hundred, but I've only just started like yeah. I used to just ignore it now I just I don't care like if you're gonna be negative or if you're gonna be a hate follower which happens like mm -hmm. I get those like I, I blocked one this morning who was a hate follower yeah. and I'm like why are you here like, I bye. won't even I don't even interact with you like if you say something no. that I perceive as shitty in, yeah, you're like gone. I'm I'm not gonna let you into my house if you show up at my yeah. door and you're like I don't actually like okay look I will have conversation with you if we have different opinions I'm yes not a, I'm not a yeah yeah ding dong but no. like if you're gonna show up and be like you look like a, a foot and I hate everything about you. I'll be like, okay, go kick rocks. Get out of Bye. here. Like, go away. Fine. Like, why would I let that happen? Don't like, come into my space. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. Uh, block for sure. And then I also just like, I don't, I won't go back and look at comment sections. Very, very yeah. seldomly. Yeah. And often I like, cause I feel like I do post a lot of things that are like, like when I like write a lot on something, I often won't look at the comments at all. Yeah, I just no. like, well, I won't interact with them even once. I'm just like, oh, hey, cool. really? Like, no. you won't even look at them at all? No. Oh, your poor audience. <laughs> I, so, sometimes. <laughs> okay, like, they're just like, you just post and ghost. You're like, <laughs> bye. I don't want to interact with you guys. 90% <laughs> of the time I interact yeah. with the comments, but there yeah, is yeah. like 10% where I'm like, I put like a lot of thought into this and like feel like this could be controversial. Yeah. I'm just like, not gonna, this is no, my- yeah. And you know, I would let you know if there's anything happening 100%. that you should address. <laughs> yes. Like Sarah, by the way. You should probably get on there. Um, no, I don't post on ghosts all the time. Just 10%. No, no. 
Yeah. Uh, no. So I think that that's okay. like the things that I do the most online to protect. I, however, should say I am very lucky and I don't think that I get a lot of hate. No, you don't. No. Like but it's also, been five years and I've only blocked 700 people in five years. I, I didn't, the bigger your, pro, your, the bigger your platform gets, sorry, the more hate you get. not even necessarily no, the, it's bigger, true. the more of your content that's seen. Yeah. Like my reels do well. And I'm yes. very appreciative of it because 90% of the time it's to my audience or to people who are like-minded individuals and are like wonderful. Yeah. However, Sometimes that's not the case. Yeah. And I just have learned to accept that. And I have never in my history of how many years being online turned off my comment section. No. Ever. Because I just ignore it. Yeah. And it boosts engagement. And then I get awesome humans who see it and then follow me and then join my community. Yeah. So I'm sorry if you're a hater and if you're a troll and you like commenting negative stuff, you're just giving that person engagement. Totally. Like, you're making them money a lot of the time, especially on TikTok for Americans. Like you don't make money on TikTok, but like you're making yeah. Anyways. Uh have you ever like really like gone at? So I had someone once, um, the worst thing that someone had ever said to me online was after I said that I was getting back uh COVID vaccine while I was pregnant. Oh, I had God. someone and I am like, you know, I openly talk about vaccines. I think they're really important. Whatever. Mm -hmm. So I had someone tell me that they hope that I miscarry. Um because I don't deserve to parent a child if I'm willing to put that into my body. Uh, so this person was not very smart. They had a What's very- What's their name? Can you give <laughs> me their name? And their... <laughs> they, they had a very open profile. They had pictures oh, of themselves. Old. Their name was on their profile. It was very, very easy to find out where they work and to send their comment to their boss. So that's probably like the- the I was like you attacked a pregnant woman who's like deep in her feels you told me that I was gonna miss you hope I miscarry like oh no it went ham. they it's almost like they should have consequences for their actions <laughs> weird in this right world. yeah so I sent it to around employer. and find out buddies <laughs> yeah I I will say this um because I'm sure we have a couple of like random hate listeners which happens you know why probably you wasting, why are you wasting your time no, I know. So, but I will say this, the amount of information that I'm able to find on the internet. About so. I'm obsessed with, um, Alicia, how she deals with hate comments. That she oh, just, like, she puts them on black. I love it. Yeah. She's I, like, yeah, I don't mess. Like, sorry. Like here, let me just put this, your name, your mm -hmm. profile, everything. My grandma used to tell me, and I think I've said this on this podcast before, my grandma and my mom used to say, if you wouldn't say it in a newspaper with your picture published beside it, don't say it. And I, I think know. that that's so important online and an online what space. Is, like, yeah. What is wrong with people? Like, they're wild. I would never, never think of saying stuff like that to strangers I don't even know. No. And, like, other people's lives have zero effect on me. Like, no. Who, whoever is doing whatever on the internet has no effect on me that I'm going to like waste my energy to fight with them. Like that just doesn't make sense to me. Hurt people, hurt people. Like, the, like none of these people saying mean things are happy. None of these people no. are confident in themselves. They're miserable. That's and, a like, really that... hard thing to like digest though. When you're, when I you know. first, when you, I remember like my oh, yeah. first hate comment, I was like, what are like, I am just putting on clothes on the internet. Why do people hate me? And like, it took a really long time for me to realize it literally has nothing to do with me. They don't hate you. They hate themselves. No. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. And like, at the end of the day, that's all it is. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Sorry for Have you your sadness. Like I can send you a therapy recommendation. <laughs> Better help. Uh, if you want Better to sponsor, help. if you want I have to sponsor a discount these episodes, <laughs> I have a discount code. If you need it, let me know. Okay. Um, do you feel like your mental health has gotten better or worse since being on the internet? Worse, for sure. Mm -hmm. It's. I think so. This job, everyone always likes to poop on the content creation realm and be like, "You guys have the easiest job of all time." Like, try being a tradesman. Try being a nurse. Try like, yeah, for sure. I know everything is hard. Like, I'm aware, I'm fully aware that what we do is in, in the grand scheme of things is fairly easy but because I came, I did, this isn't all I know. I worked in the real world mm -hmm. for the majority of my adult life. Like I, yeah. I know, I know guys, but at the same time, the mental aspect of this job 
is the worst that I have ever experienced in my entire life. Like, yeah. like the worst ever. And like, I, I, there are a lot of things that I have gotten better at. Yeah. With protecting my mental health. Um, I'm not afraid to take breaks anymore. I'm not afraid to, um, be a little bit like more specific about what I share. Like sometimes I just don't share things because mm-hmm. I don't want to really receive the backlash of it. Yeah. And that's fine. Like I'm allowed to do that. This is totally. my house. I'm allowed to put up whatever art I want and hide whatever I want in the basement. Like that's mm-hmm. just my life. Right. But at yeah. the same time, like it comes with the territory. I understand that, but like, it doesn't get easy. Like, I oh. think if anything, my thin's gotten thinner, my thin's gotten thinner, my <laughs> skin's gotten thinner. And yeah, um, yeah, it's just hard. Like, I, I, I think the hardest part for me is not, not so much like having all these people say horrible things about me. It's more so like me um, not understanding what I've done wrong. Like, I feel like guilty for things that I've never done before, like, because of people just saying things. Well, you take, like, you're just such an empathetic human being also. Like, you're, you're just such a good soul that I feel like you really do take it on. Like, even, like, some of the conversations that we've had about what people have said, like, it rock like it rocks you to your core and it's like that's not who you are no um and it's so unfair that people can like put a label on someone or say something about someone and that becomes someone else's truth and it's that, just that's yeah. my my only concern is like I uh, feeling like what if my friends or my family or you know anybody who I like love in my community sees something and thinks differently of me because yeah. someone else spewing lies or yeah Yeah. like that's that's the only thing for me is like like I can deal with it myself because I know I'm not a bad person but I would hate for someone who I know and love to think differently of me because of something a troll said or and it's I hope that we're just like far enough into this world of the internet where people like anyone can say anything and like people know that it's not truth right I would hope so but like I don't know some people aren't aren't doing their due diligence when it comes to that stuff. A hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. So what's like, what, what's something, is there anything like that you've learned going forward? Like, um, about like hate comments or anything like that, or do you find like, for the most part, you're, you're pretty good in that department? I, (laughs) um, I've gotten a lot better and I honestly, my hate comments have, and you're so right about like the audience reach when every single one of my TikToks was getting like 500,000 views like back in 2021 um it came full throttle and I, it was hard for me I also think though it helped me grow a bigger skin or like a yeah, thicker skin thicker skin yeah. um and it helped me just become more confident in like what I was doing um because you would see like these hate comments and it was cool not cool uh but it was interesting to see because you would see one person say something shitty and then 700 people would be like no I'm not I'm saying not saying go attack people that are saying no no no. but it was really cool to see people like come to your defense I do I do I should say that like I'm very appreciative for my community because I I every day I see them going to the trenches in my comment section and yeah. destroying these people sometimes <laughs> I'm like oh man <laughs> like, but like I like I don't I don't have the energy no but if you, you don't need time. to like and I no just, one needs to go do that like my no, follower no one's following you don't need to stick up for me it's fine mm-hmm. it doesn't bug me any there are certain things that people can say about me like I've had people attack me as a mother um and that really hurts me because I feel like I'm still I'm learning and we're all we're learning. learning and trying but I'm and you're so doing your best. New, right. Like, yeah. Um, like I get people that will, you know, say things like get off your phone, spend time with your baby. Um, and it's like, you see 10 minutes of my day every single day, 10 minutes. Like I don't, I post maybe once a day and I film all my content with my kids sleeping. I don't need to justify this. And you then, don't like, need to justify it. Like people <laughs> are wild. They're wild. And it's like, you see yeah. 10 minutes of my day. You don't see me laying on the floor and playing with her all day long. Like no. it, it, it's fine. No. Um, so there are things that hurt, but I think that my ability to deal with them has gotten a lot better as long as it's not an attack on like my kid or my husband. Like that's, yeah, where, that's I where I struggle too. Yeah. Don't talk. You can talk about me all you want. You talk about my kids. You talk about my family. You talk about my so friends. Hard you're done it's like when I see like people you're in, your, in your in your comments that I'm like I'll I'll 
Oh. Where are where oh. are you? <laughs> no one messes with Scully. Um some some like nice girl Becky listening to this is like, what did I do? Be- Becky, you did nothing. I'm so Becky, sorry. Becky, we love Children, you. We love you, Becky. Um yeah. So it's it's been interesting. It's been interesting because I think that it's actually helped my mental health me. I think that I was like unsure of myself when I started in this world. Um, And now I'm, I feel more confident in who, I know who I am better. I think just from like sharing who I am on the internet. And I now understand that those people's opinions have no, like other people's opinions are none of my business. And I truly believe that. Um, And it's helped me have that same mentality in life, um, like outside of the internet. That's good. I find that like, I still and Bryce says it and he'll see it I still get like really dirty looks from like older people in in life like out in public um because I'm heavily tattooed especially with a baby um so it's helped me like allow that to not bug me the way that it used to um that's good yeah so it's like it's been like a weird catch-22 sorry Reese is living her best life back there I love that for her (laughs) (laughs) okay here's a really good thing like here's a good like I want your opinion on this. Okay. When you see people that you follow and have huge platforms, mm-hmm. how do you, um, do, do you ever watch their content, go to their comment section, see things about them? And what are your thoughts? Like, what are your thoughts on that? Like what goes through your head? If like one of your favorite followers has a viral video or they just are like super popular and get hundreds of thousands of views every time. And you go to their comments and you see opinions on them or drama on them. Yeah. How how do you how do you view that? Like it does, as a I, consumer, I think it's different because we're in this world that we so know too. that it's bullshit ninety nine point nine percent of the time. Is there probably some fact to stuff every once in a while? Yeah, I'm sure there is, but ninety nine point nine percent of the time it's crap. Um, so I think that we view it differently. Like I don't. I don't read other people's comment sections to learn about other people, you know, that's like, that's like going to the tabloids to learn about your favorite celebrities. Like it's Mm -hmm. like those, it's the magazine. Yeah. It's the magazine at the checkout counter that has says that princess Diana is still alive. Right. Like it's conspiracy theory garbage. Um, put on your little tinfoil hat and like, that's not, it's not truthful. No, no, I agree. I think that that's really a good outlook of it. And sorry, Reese is having a, you're fine. You're it's okay, fine. Reese. Good. Um, what about you? Do you like? Um, yeah, that's ninety percent of the time. I feel the same way. No. Um, I do feel guilty though because I feel like, um, especially when it's a mutual or it's someone who, um, I never know the right thing to do because. I, a part of me wants to go to bat for them and mm-hmm. rip up these people in the comments to shreds. Yeah. But I don't even do that on my own page. So I feel guilty. Like I actually feel guilty seeing hate comments on my mutuals and friends pages and not saying anything because I just, I don't know what to do. Like what is the right thing to do? I, I the, the odd time I have said something, nothing crazy, but the odd no. time I have said something, but I just, I get so angry and, yeah. um, I want to like stick up for every single person under the sun. But at the same time, I have learned it does nothing. Like, at least in my opinion, it's done nothing. I think like the thing to do for like talking to a is, it is. And like, I think that like, you know, when I've seen I, the, something, I'll like, I'll put like the best comment I could think of yeah. and like I'll save and like I'll do all that stuff to just like give them a little extra love but like I don't no, like, I feel not- bad that I don't go to bat for them in the comment section and beat up all these people but I also like you're not gonna change it's like talking to brick wall you're not gonna change anyone's opinion and it's just like I don't I think that like when it's a friend of mine like a like I mean there's mutuals and then I think there's like friends I think yeah. those are two different things like yes, I'll agreed. check I'll check in on like you yes. for example yeah. I'll be like hey are you doing are you cool? Um, or like if it's something that I undoubtedly know, and I I don't want to bring Alicia up again, but like when people say shitty shit about her marriage, like I've seen the two of them together. They're so in love. So like I have gone to bat in her comment section before for that, but also like, it doesn't change anything. They're not, people are the worst. No, like you can't let other people take your energy. And I think that that's what it's doing. That's what I feel. Yeah, I do. I feel like, I feel like I, I just, I leave, I leave that feeling guilty yeah. and like crappy. I, and like when, 
Yeah. Do you all like, I also just like, don't really look at other people's comment sections. I've gotten a lot better at that. I can't do it. Like no. I just, I mean, like, unless I'm going in to write a comment and it just happens to be like, there. totally. But I, uh, yeah, I feel like comment sections can either be really horrible or really helpful. And there's no in between. No, there's never like, one that's just like a five. I right it doesn't exist it's like I hate everything about you you're a troll and the worst human in the entire world or it's like I love you so much thank you for being here like there's never a there's not no a healthy middle ground also one of the things about Instagram that drives me up the wall is the restricted comments the yeah. restrict they're restricting comments that say like you're so beautiful or can you let me know about this product or like how are you know blah 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 and then the ones above it like that are just public are like you're a whale you. die <laughs> like, I don't like, like what is the point of this Instagram get your together do you use um like the blocked words or whatever on Instagram neither do I because what am I gonna block like what words like, I, part of me wants to like block the ones that are like ambassador dm we say we say oh, DM. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> those are the best <laughs> but i'm like oh, i don't want those um yeah i don't use it either because it's it's like what am i gonna block like fat no right because like who cares like if care. someone calls me fat i don't I'm care. like i'm like okay, if someone yeah. comes for my like like my morals and stuff like that i'm like get out of here yeah. i'm a good person <laughs> someone tells me i have bad eyebrows it's over <laughs> um <laughs> what do you do outside of like the internet to protect your mental health in this space put my phone down yeah G- leave my phone away yeah. especially when i'm around my kids um, if we're like out at the park or things like that, like, obviously there's times that I am on my phone, but, um, yeah, just ditch my phone. It. Yeah. It's, it's so unhealthy. It's, I mean, this day and age, it's so unhealthy for us to have our phone and to be accessible. So 24 hours a day. It's so messed up. So, so I, th- up. that's something I've been struggling with, but like getting better at is, not turning maybe I'll just start turning my phone off but leaving my phone for you know hours at a time sometimes days at a time Mm -hmm. if I need it um it's just hard though too I I'm very grateful to have such a good community where they always always are like if you're having a bad time like do not feel obligated to show up like Mm -hmm. you take a break take a few days take a week off but the thing is is like it's, it's our job. So that's hard too, right? Looking at it, like you're taking a mental health leave from work. It's not like I'm just, you know, not creating for fun anymore. Like, yes, I create for fun, but also yeah. it's my, it's my job. It's how I make money for my family. But every so, other job gets weekends. I know. And we every don't. other job gets weekends. So it's I like, know. I have like had to really ingrain that into my head in the last little bit is especially because I think I mean we talked about this a couple episodes I wanted so badly to make this year work like this was going to be the year and Mm -hmm. so I think there are times where I feel like I kind of wasted parts of my mat leave like just being on my phone all of the time Um, and that's probably like the biggest mental health strain on me right now is like Mm -hmm. there's like times where I'm like I wish I just like was more present in this moment with her um instead of fucking taking a picture and making a story and like it is what it is um but I I feel now that I'm like, you know what? I get weekends. I get weekends where I just get to enjoy my family. I don't get to think about work. And like, this mm-hmm. is work right now. And it's okay. I'm allowed. Yeah. And you shouldn't feel guilty. I mean, I do. But you shouldn't feel guilty yeah. for taking a day or two off. Um, it shouldn't affect you that much. So does. I'm I I am taking more days off, but I'm not taking... <sighs> like no, long extended breaks. So there, there, I, you know, I will say that there are days that I like post less and like do less mm-hmm. and like maybe only post like three or four stories a day. And those are the days that I'm really just needing a bit of a break. And I'm yeah. kind of doing the bare minimum yeah. um, because my mental health needs it. Like totally. Yeah. It's hard. It is. It's hard to navigate like what's, what's the best thing for you, for your family, for your mental health. And sometimes all of those things aren't the same you know yeah, totally yeah which is hard yeah. yeah plus we live in a world of like hustle culture you know what I mean Fuck like hustle culture girl boss get I the bag and blah blah blah, I blah, blah. hate it yeah I don't want to hustle 
I don't, I, I want to just either. like, I don't, I also have this like really, it's big, it's important to me to show up authentically, like as myself online. And I'm yep. not a fucking hustler. Like Me I, either. I'm a, I love rot culture. I want to rot in my bed and I want to like, I want to, I work hard. Don't get me yeah, wrong. Like no, no, I work for sure. so hard in, in everything that I do, but I also don't, it's not, I want to be happy with what I have in the moment and not always mm-hmm. be thinking about what's next. And what's I'm what's next. It's exhausting. Like this, this industry too. And that's another thing that's not widely talked about is how competitive. Oh my God. Yeah. And how, and it's not even competitive. Like I never get mad at seeing someone win no. ever. Like, no. especially when they're my friends or my mutuals, I get so excited. It inspires me. It makes me want to work harder. But I think the problem with this industry is like, it's competitive in the sense that it's a constant competition against yourself. Mm-hmm. And you're constantly wanting to go bigger and yeah. get more and do this. And it's, and it's ingrained. Like there was a time I can think back to Zoe two years ago who could have never fathomed having a hundred thousand followers yeah. on any platform. I'm sorry. You have, and don't you have 150,000 followers? I have almost 400 across yeah. all my platforms. Yeah. But because of this industry constantly pushing on you that it's not enough, that in your head, you're like, okay, well, that's cool. But like this person has 700,000. This mm-hmm. person has a million. So it const- it makes you feel like you're not enough. Like totally. no matter what you do. And that's just, they, that, that's how it, they get you. That's how these platforms get you is that there's always going to be more that you can achieve. And it's so hard. It's so hard to be like, no, I'm okay. And that's something I've been working on yeah. as of late is mm-hmm. being super appreciative for what I have. Because yeah. Zoe three years ago would have pooped her pants <laughs> in one spot to be where I am today. The fact that I get to do this job every day, so incredibly cool. Totally. I'm I'm the I'm so lucky. And like yeah. I will never not be grateful for it. But because of how this industry is structured, it puts it into my brain that I can't be grateful until I've reached the best I've ever been. And like no, it's never it's and always that's be. never there's never there's yeah. never an end. That's the problem, is there's never an end. Even for the people who have 20 million followers, they could have 25, they could have 30. Like that's just, it's never ending. And I, so I find this conversation always so interesting because it's never, not never. I I want to grow, but I think that we've talked about this before. It's like, I don't want to have a hundred thousand followers. I don't want to, I want to be able to go. You have, public. you have a, you have more than a hundred thousand followers. <laughs> what are you talking about? TikTok, I feel like TikTok doesn't fucking count anymore. Like I feel like someone TikTok- Someone said one time that if you have like a million followers on TikTok, it's the equivalent of a hundred thousand followers uh-huh, on YouTube. Right? Like it's because they're it's it's hard to be loyal on TikTok. A hundred percent. Because that app is all over the place. So it's like I have a similar following on t- TikTok as I do on Instagram. If you really think mm-hmm. about it, like it's mm-hmm. thirty. It's actually like right on. Um, yep. It's never. It, it's not that it's not about the followers for me, and because it's important, reach is important. I just. I don't think I'm as motivated by that because I have had such slow growth and I haven't ever gone through this like boom period with the exception of TikTok. I went through like a ridiculous boom there at the beginning, but like, I've never, it's just for me, it's not, I don't think it's achievable. I don't think it's achievable that I will ever reach a hundred thousand followers and that's fine. Um, and I think it's a dream that I gave up on a long time ago for myself. Um, and it's created this kind of peace, but my point of like, uh, where I get really angry with myself or like hard on myself is, um, what's next when it comes to like brand partnerships. Cause I've mm-hmm. gone through so many dry spells and it is so scary. Um, and I constantly, you know, it's, it, it's kind of like baby milestones, like something fun would happen with cell or something. Like I get a cool partnership and I don't pay attention to that partnership because I'm like, well, this one's going to be over in 10 minutes. So what's next? Um, and like, there's that constant pressure where it, I like make myself sick about that. Like it's, I never feel like I'm good enough. I never feel like I'm enough or bringing in enough or like doing enough because I don't have brands constantly flooding my inbox. So I'm like, that means I'm not showing up authentically online or that means I'm not someone's taste. Like I'm not enough for these people. Or even Mm -hmm. like yesterday I was having a conversation with like an owner of, um, this business, uh, occupied mind, which I bought some of their clothes and I love them. And she's like, how have I never heard of you? Like you're a Canadian creator. I've never heard of you. And it's, and she didn't mean it meanly at all, but like, but it's true. Like people in Edmonton, like 
no one knows who I am. I'm a very like mm-hmm. undercover creator. Um, and so that's where I find like I'm hard on myself is like I don't have the same, I have the same following as some people, but I don't have the same like brand as some people. Like people don't know who I am, and that's fine. I think does that makes sense. Think, so I do. It does make sense, and I understand it because I have a similar mindset, especially yeah. when it comes to brand partnerships, is I'm constantly worried that I'm not doing enough or that yeah. I'm not. Uh, appealing enough to brands. Like maybe I'm not thin enough. Maybe I'm not young enough. Like things like that do go through my brain on a daily basis. And like, yes, I'm a small fish in a big pond. Like that always goes through my brain. But just from like an outsider perspective, hearing you talk about that. No, I mean, I am your friend. And like, that's obviously going to make a bit of a difference. But like you saying something like, I'm just like, I'm, I'm nobody. I'm this, I'm that. Like I have like 30,000 followers, this and that. But from what And I'm not trying to like come off rude to anyone else in this scenario, but like your reach, like your community loves you. Like you have what, like you may have 30,000 followers, but you have 30,000 more engagement and love and like loyalty than some people out there who have 2,250,000 followers on Instagram. Like it is wild to see the, like, that is like, that is like the most beneficial thing that you can have as a creator and is I having lo- like the, the community aspect of it. Right? And I feel so grateful for that. And I think that it's, that's been like a really good thing about slow growth. And I don't think that people talk about yeah, that enough. It's like no. slow growth people, like my, I talked and I'm not kidding you. I talk to people in my DMs more than I talk to anybody else in the entire world. Like mm-hmm. I feel so grateful because I do have people that like, literally are like, I feel like they're part of my life. And yeah. if I don't hear from them every couple of days, I'm like, oh you're goodness. like, what's going on with Is them? Tiffany like, okay? Yeah. I know I'm the same way. I have Tina. I have like Jewel. Right? I have this, like I have all my girls. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's like, it, it's, it's funny. Cause we compare ourselves so much to everyone else. And I think that that's like, that, that's the end of the day. It's like, we're all going to have something that someone else doesn't. And it's going to, it's never going to be enough. And no, we just no. need to be. So then you got to learn to not care. Like right? I don't care. I do care. But I'm trying to not care about the yeah. fact that I'm not, I don't have a million followers or that no. this and that. Not that that's not impressive. If you're listening and you have a million followers, wild. go off. That's Pop amazing. Off. Good for you. Um, it's that's wild. Like, it's unachievable in a lifetime for a lot of people. So I feel like it's that's something you should be For 99% so, of the world. Yeah. So that's something you should be so proud of and like definitely not take lightly. But at the same time, like I... I'm okay. Like I'm good. I just, I just would love a little more consistency. I think that's Mm -hmm. the thing too, is like with this industry, it's so up and down. And even if my downs weren't all the way down and just like a little less, I'd be like, good. I'd be Mm -hmm. good. Like, I just wish I had a little bit more consistency when it came to my income and like that kind of stuff. And like, that's a huge part of, I think, mental health in this industry, which I don't know that people talk about is like when, like it's feast or famine. Yeah, it is. For for some of us, it's feast Mm -hmm. or famine for some of us. And like for someone who has always kind of had just like a traditional job, like not getting a paycheck every two weeks is so stressful. The amount of sleep that I have lost, um, just thinking about like, (laughs) when's my next paycheck coming in? Like it's terrifying. It is. And a lot of things too, that a lot of people don't realize is like when you do a brand partnership, you don't get paid then the next day. It's usually net 30, if not next 60. I've had a net 90 once in my life. I'm never doing that again. (laughs) I always get net 90s. Do you get net 90s? I've had like six of them and then they pay late and you're like, now it's like net 120. So what, if anyone's curious, what that means is once you've completed the partnership with the brand, then they, in the contract, you either have like a net 30, net 45, net 60. And what that means is once the brand partnership is then completed, they have to pay you within 30, 45, 60, 90 days. So for instance, like I just got paid for a partnership that I did in December. Yeah. To put that into perspective. So I didn't get money for that partnership in December. I got it in February. It's, <laughs> like, wi- it's wild. It's wild. And like, it's fine. It's, I've, I've come it's to, like, I've learned, I've learned how to navigate it. I'm very grateful too, because my husband has a very consistent yeah. paycheck. It's like every two weeks, like how I would used to get paid. You know what I mean? So we, we have learned how to budget accordingly mm-hmm. and like do all those things accordingly. And it works out great. Like everything's 
perfect, but it's so hard to live <laughs> with, with that. To make plans in life yeah. to be like, so I need a couch, but yeah. I'm not. Yeah. Uh, I mean, that's a big purchase, but yeah, it's it is just- a big purchase though. Like, like, you know, and like when we needed a car, like I'm like, we need a car now. And yeah. Like, how am I going to be like, Hey, I mean, I make money, but like, I don't make it every <laughs> time there's a car payment. So, no, so we'll you figure it out. Me? It's fine. <laughs> it worked out like everything's fine, but like, it's just weird. It's a little wonky. That's it's a all. weird industry. So like, there's just a lot of, I think there's a lot in this that plays to our mental health. Yeah, there is a lot a of lot. factors, so yeah. many factors. And then there's always the pressure of having to be like cool and like younger and like make cool friends and be really impressive and like that kind of stuff. And like whenever I go to creator events, like, I mean, I've been, I think from what I've heard, I've heard some horror stories based on like TikTok, like creator events yeah. and stuff like that, where people are like, how many followers do you have? Are you verified? Like what's going on? Like the I've never been to an event like that. So I'm just, I, like, it probably helps that we're in Canada too. Can like, you imagine my face? It would be like this. No, I. <laughs> Are you real? Is this just like, serious? Hi, nice to meet you. What's your <laughs> sign? <laughs> I just, it's an interesting industry. It's it a is, weird industry. Yeah. I, but you're right. Like to stay relevant and to like always be buying new things. Oh gosh. Yeah. I'm trying the over so consumption hard. is so bad in this I'm, industry I'm trying I remember the days where I would literally every two weeks place a massive sheen order oh the sheen like, the chokehold sheen had on us influencers um, I know I haven't shopped at sheen in almost two years I'm so proud yeah. of myself two I do, years it's I like I still have sheen products a hundred percent shocking I have they've lasted for three to four years is it shocking like it is all, weird it's yeah bizarre. and I have I have thrifted some sheen stuff too but yeah. like I, yeah, I haven't shopped on Shein in almost two years as of the summer because, yeah, because no. of how like addicting and it's horrible and instant gratification. bad for the environment, like instant gratification. Yeah. And like, if you are listening to this and, and you shop at Shein, it's fine. but oh, I think the it. difference is, is when you have a platform and you're spending hundreds of to thousands of dollars each year shopping at Shein every month so that you can get views and engagement and things like that. It's terrible for the environment. Like oh, really it is. And I don't mean to be like that preacher girl. It's like, it's terrible for the environment I, as I'm drinking my water bottle. But like, it's, it's just, it's a different level. It's a different level of bad. Like when that's, I would yeah. purposely order stuff that I knew would be shitty so it would oh no yeah start conversation conversation and like yeah like I had a whole system with Shein and like oh, I didn't I was, know that oh yeah I and I was doing that. hauls every every two weeks like without <gasps> like it was wow ba- it was bad and like okay. I Bryce is like the amount of clothes that we've donated and like I think I donate all my clothes to women's shelters mm-hmm. like it is I still feel like shit about it. Like it's, it, they end up in landfills. I'm trying so hard to be more sustained, like shop more sustainably now and like more ethically um, and support brands that are sustainable and ethical. Yes. Um, yeah. However, it's not always reasonable. And like, I do still shop, I still buy my jeans at Dynamite. Um, yeah. But like, and, and it's sometimes it's conscious. not accessible. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And like also existing in bigger bodies, Makes I know hard. how hard it is to find plus size clothing on a normal day. And so affordable I will never, cl- affordable no. plus, no, I get it. I do yeah. get it. So I no just sh- think there's a balance. I think that there's like being aware of the fact that it's, you know, Shein is like a whole other like it like think about any fast fashion brand that's Mm -hmm. in the mall combine all of the fast fashion brands in the mall and they still don't have the environmental impact impact. that Shein does like that's kind of what I'm saying it's It's wild it's scary (laughs) they but they still slide into my emails every week asking if I want to do a brand deal that's never ending (laughs) it's never ending ending. Um, oh and Timu if I get one more from email from Timu Guys, no, I wanted to see me. how much they paid once upon a time. I don't know if I'm allowed to. Am I allowed to share? Yeah. Are whatever. you going to be working with them in the upcoming future? Two hundred dollars. Oh. And I was I like, two hundred dollars to splatter my name? Absolutely not. Yeah, like, and again, if you work with Timu or if you like, fine. But like at the same time, like, 
I Stop it. <laughs> everything I've ordered from Timu, I've only placed like two or three orders. Every single order I've made, something Garbage. has been broken or yes, totally different or just it's just like it's wild how mm-hmm. terrible the products are. Some yeah. of them, I'm sure you could find some cool stuff, but like I, I tried just, it. I did two or three orders. I'm like, I'm no, I'm good. I'm, I'm done. done. I'm out. Yeah. Yeah. But it is what it is. Mm-hmm. Um, there's just always constant pressure on everything. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm coming to here. It Here's is my revelation. It's, no, it is. It's constant pressure, constant um feeling of inadequacy. Like I just I constantly feel like I'm never going to be enough. Yeah. And um, it's no way to live. So yeah. I've learned to just be okay with what I have and be, be grateful for what I have. And I am, I don't, not a day goes by that I don't wake up and I'm like, this is so cool. Like, and I do, I, I still have moments of, I'm like, literally like, I'm like, this is the cool, like the fact that we get to sit and talk for an hour on a Thursday. My favorite. It's my favorite day of the week. That's our job. Like yeah. what? um and that's I I don't want it to I don't want what we just talked about to like fall on the the fact that we're not grateful because we are like no like, like it's, it's the coolest so thing ever. cool it's yeah. so stinking cool what we get to do um and it you know the the good always outweighs the bad um but I also think that it's fair to like you know there's mental health stuff that comes along with it and I think that if you're like looking to get into the space it's important to like unfortunately get ready for it like it is yeah. isn't recognize like, it's not always sunshine and rainbows yeah and it's not all yeah. PR packages and no. viral videos a lot of it's it is, very cool it's awesome it's incredible that that even happens to so people cool. on the internet like that's so cool but there is a dark a very dark side mm-hmm. to this industry and being a part of this industry and it's, trying not to fall into it I this, guess or this, getting too deep yeah, it's like an onion. It's got layers. It's got layers. <laughs> cake has layers. I love but cake. You, but you had to choose an onion. Do you like it's Shrek? A- Are you? Yeah. Someone, yeah. What, okay, who was who it? Who doesn't it was, like Shrek? No, okay. So the, I think it was Brittany Broski just said, like, she's like, there's a really distinguished way to, like, determine um, Gen Z from millennials oh, or something no. like that. And she's like, and it has to do with Shrek memes and who shares them and thinks they're funny. <laughs> Look at Shrek's an icon. <laughs> an icon. I was, thinking, I was like, oh my god. And then I think about all the times that I've like laughed so hard at the people with the Shrek parties and <laughs> Shrek parties. They do like a Shrek theme. I've never been party. invited. I want to go. That's no, gonna be so- like I've never been to a Shrek party. <laughs> I'm not saying they're that Just common. Paint, paint your body green and add weird what little ears. This? Shut up! I love. Yeah, it. I've seen it on TikTok, and I'm like laughing so hard. And then I immediately saw her talk, say that. And I'm like, oh, I'm a loser millennial. <laughs> it's fine. I love being a loser millennial. We look great. We do look pretty good for our we age. Look great. Yeah. No, I have seen like, have you seen that trend on TikTok where I'm how like, old do I look? How old I am? And everyone I kind of want to. I want to do it. Oh, I don't care. I know that I, I, I'm to some people I look really young. To some people I look really old. So I'm I don't like, think you look old at all. You don't think so? No. Oh, thanks. I want to. I feel like I look really young for my age. No, you do look young. <laughs> Uh, so I kind of want to do it as like a confidence boost. You and I look the same age. I think in my opinion, like you and I look like we could be. But we're not that far apart. Are we? No, but I am younger than you. That's fair. So like there is a few years. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Bryce, people often think that Bryce is older than I am, which always makes me. I can see that. Real happy. Yeah. Is Bryce your age or is he? No, he's two years younger than I am. He's like my age. Yeah. I get ID'd. He does not. And I mean, like, it's a, I'm not, I don't look like I'm 18. I'm not no. wild, but no. you know. I have gotten asked my ID before at the liquor store, like it's recently. The best. And I'm like, oh, what do you think I'm under it's 21? Bit, do you get ID'd <laughs> when you don't have your ID and you're like, oh. No, no, because I always have my ID. Why don't you oh, have I that? Don't. What are you just like walking around without your wallet? Like what, yeah. what are you, are you that girl that takes out cards from her wallet like, I'm going to take a debit card and a credit card. I'm going to no. go. No, I just. What are you I, doing then? Where is I, your ID? I just use my phone for everything. Oh, you are like a Gen Z encapsulated in a millennial body, aren't you? Well, I, 
I couldn't tell you the last time I pulled out my debit card. Oh, I do that for, I don't even what? know how I would use my phone and <laughs> use this just phone too. And I'm like, I don't, how do I do that? Or my going to get? Are they going to get my social insurance number? <laughs> well, thanks, thanks, dad. <laughs> um, oh, so yeah. So I'd like, I'm my biggest fear in life. I never have my ID with me ever. And like, oh. I'll drive my car without my driver's license all the time. And I'm like, what if I get pulled over? I'm going to be in so much trouble. Just say, I'm like, oh, whoops. I'm just on my way home. But like, you can come home with me and I'll get it. <laughs> you can come home with me. And then officer. that's inconvenient. So then they're just not going to yeah, do that. They'll let you off. And then yeah. you like, cry a little. Yeah, 100%. But yeah, no, I never carry my ID with me. So I, whenever I stop at the liquor store, they're like, no, you can't buy a booze here now that you don't have your ID. And you're like, well, fuck. Mm, mm. Yeah. Anyways, that's a that took a weird turn. <laughs> <laughs> Our episodes are never <laughs> consistent. We're always like, this is what we're going to talk about. And then by the end of the episode, we're like, what is happening? <laughs> what can we talk about this episode? <laughs> Abbotsford? Um, yeah. Amazing. So I guess I guess the takeaway is, is <laughs> we love our jobs. It's cool. We love our jobs. We love you all. We're grateful so for much. all of you. But sometimes people suck and they make <laughs> they ruin a good thing <laughs> i think everyone has i'm trying to not use the the word care the term karen anymore even though i'm using it but everyone has like a one of those at, at work right and we just have a hundred thousand of them no i'm just kidding we just have a few of them <laughs> yeah just um, imagine all of your karens at work behind their phones that's what we have is all way, of your karens in a pile attacking weighing us. <laughs> weighing in on everything that you do Oh my, so there's this one. I, I don't like I'm... cottage cheese. What can I use instead? This recipe is stupid. <laughs> so there's this one um, lady. I can't remember. I feel like her name's Susan or something, but she always comments on my stuff. And it's the most passive aggressive, like anti compliments you could ever imagine. And I haven't blocked her yet because it's kind, it it's kind, kind of funny. Me laugh. Yeah. So <laughs> she's like, she's, she's, old like she's not old but she's like in her 60s yeah. maybe sorry if you're in your 60s you're not old she's old though <laughs> like she's just like living in an old mindset and she has this like blurry photo of her in her profile picture where she's in this dress on vacation and she has like her like dyed blonde hair and like she's this. holding a margarita or something she looks like someone's grandma that shouldn't be complimenting anybody any given day because it'll be backhanded and it, yeah. it's not going to be nice Anyway, so Susan always pops into, <laughs> into my comment section every once in a while. I don't think she follows me. I think she just like comes just upon my content. Comes and checks you out. Yeah. Every once in a while. And for some reason, her comment always seems to be like there in my notifications. I'm like, Susan again? Like, what, <laughs> are, you, what are you saying, Susan? <sighs> so like, for instance, like I'll have an outfit on and she'll be like, horizontal stripes. You need to avoid those. <laughs> or... <laughs> Or she's like, you need to really look into more black color and floor length. Susan, kick rocks. This is, these are her, and I. they're just so. There's something backhanded about that. That's just mean. Straight up. But like at the same time, they, they always like kind of put a smile. <laughs> I'm just like, I always just like look at them and go, <laughs> and then just keep going. It doesn't even bother me because no. she's just like living her life insulting she'd say it to your face stranger she would she I would say it to you your she face would. She that's would. my she shit straight up to me 98 percent of the people that tell me that they hate me and to go cut myself online would not say that to my face but the susans they would yeah they would and if they you're gonna say no it to my face, i got respect for that if you're not gonna hide behind a keyboard maybe that's why i don't block her is probably it i'm like yeah she yeah all right she would tell me that i shouldn't wear horizontal stripes and then i would tell her that she's wrong uh and anyone can wear stripes yeah yeah that's Potter. true i i think that's the perfect place to end this episode today <laughs> i think so too <laughs> i don't know what else we can even talk about thank <laughs> you for being here thanks for hanging out make sure you give us five stars yep anything less and we don't um, want it yep you can go hang out with susan and her horizontal <laughs> stripes <laughs> And thanks for being here. Thanks for being awesome. Thanks all, all the things. for being the best community anyone could ever have. And yep. please follow our socials. Yes. Um, kind of influenced podcast across the board. All of them. All of the kind of influences is. Please. Have the, be have the best day. We'll talk to you soon. Okay. Bye. Bye. <laughs>